<sighs> this is cool. Hey everyone, I'm Lex the Ego Queen. Love me. I know you do. Anyway, 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 my camera's down a little bit. Let's, uh, let's bring that up just a bit. <sighs> Forge Bane. Forge Bane is BattleBots in space. <laughs> Two elderly armies fighting over the rights to the lawn. Who's going to mow it first? Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. I know. I'm terrible. Bad jokes aside. So GW finally released Forge, Bla uh, Forge Blaine. You merely adopted the technology. We were born from it. Made from it. I'm done. I promise. No more Bane references. Forge Bane, which is a battle between the Necrons of relatively unknown dynasty at this point, and the Mechanicum. And I want to say with that color scheme, and I know this is going to sound weird, I know, go figure. Those are the, uh, that's the Mars pattern color scheme, but I can't remember uh, what they're actually called, the Tegmata, something like that. I don't know. I can't remember. I'm not too up to date on my... Um, lore on the Mechanicum. I kind of find them a little bit boring, but that's just me. But before we go into this, I do want to talk about a past army that I owned. Only like 3,000 points, but I owned the Necron army, and I really enjoyed them back in 5th and 6th edition. 7th edition made them a little bit too silly, in my opinion, where they were good at close combat, and I like them being the mid-range army, the slow-moving robots, and 7th edition changed a little bit too much for me to actually like meh and I eventually did get rid of them but it's cool to see these two back in a box set together and I'm super excited about this <sighs> we get to see robots fighting each other it's a it's a set without space marines in it wait GW good job good job you did it I believed in you and you did it like we were talking about this and everything, like our, our gaming group, and we never thought we'd see the day again where Space Marines were not the centerpiece of a Space Marine versus box set. And I know a lot of people are going to point out in the comments down below, oh, but Alexis, what about this box set, this box set, this box set? You're right. But it seems like the overwhelming presence is for Space Marines because, well, they're GW's most popular models, so it only makes sense. Let's get this off. It's a little bit warm in here. So let's go over this article and what it has to say. Breaking news today. <gasps> a brand new battle box is on its way. Oh my God. We've heard, we've heard a lot over the years about conflicts between space marines and their traitor cousins. But in this set, we turn our gaze onto another ancient evil arising throughout the galaxy. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That was dumb. Um, I don't consider the Necrons evil. Like, I know to the Imperium they would seem evil, but then you got people like Trezine, the, the gay best friend, who just kind of helps out every now and then just for, just to take some stuff, you know, for his collection. Like, he took Grand Booty Greyfax and gave her back to the Imperium. <sighs> I am looking forward to this box set. Have a wonderful day. Oh, thank you for the donation. That means a lot. Um, I, I just don't consider the Necrons evil. But I want to get into this more because there's a few things that I want to talk about that are mentioned briefly in this, um, in this article. In Forge Bane, two venerable empires clash for supremacy over the Forge worlds that were revealed to be a tomb world following the opening of the... Gork's Grin. In this box set, you'll find two armies along with rules for playing them, new characters, and new lore. Oh my god. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Alright, let's get into this seriously. Sorry, I'm I'm sleep deprived. I'm sleep deprived. M insert more random excuses here for why I'm acting like this. I'm kind of excited for this. Can you tell? Alright, um... As the Adeptus Mechanicus discover the secrets of a black stone, keep that in mind, that's very, very, very important. 
a mysterious material with the potent with the potential to neuralize the powers of chaos or even amplify it to a horrific degree that i think is the most important sentence in this entire book um if you guys have read more recent lore there is a book out which the name eludes me right now and i know somebody in the live stream is going to tell me once i start this story but there is a story where a sister of silence uh, gets recalled back to Terra and teams up with a custodian to go and find the source of these blackouts in the Imperium. And it turns out that Abaddon is actually using these black stones already to nullify certain areas of space so that way the Imperials can't see what's happening in there through the Astronomicon, through, um, through Seers, through um, um, Astropaths. Thank you. So they've, they've, um, they can hide forces, they can move forces around, and the Imperium would not be any of the wiser. In fact, Abaddon's Black Crusades have been revealed to be gathering or destroying these stones. Cadia fell once the Black Stone itself, the obelisk, was destroyed. And that's when Abaddon threw a rage fit and threw a Black Stone fortress at the planet. We never said he was the calmest of fellows. Let's just put that out there. We, yeah. Okay. Uh, these black stones are incredibly important to the lore right now because they have the ability, kind of like the blanks, where they can block out psychic powers. This is incredibly useful for both the Imperium and Chaos. And apparently Necrons. I'm still trying to figure that one out. But apparently the Necrons are, were the original builders of these things. They placed them all around the galaxy and somehow while well, having a war in heaven. But we're not going to get into Necron lore because that is a confusing, garbled mess of lore that needs to be properly rewritten and explained. And it probably has and I'm just not aware of it because, meh. Yeah. And if it is, if you guys have suggestions for good Necron books, please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you. Um... So we do know that one of these was on Cadia. We do know a couple of these are all over the galaxy. And Abaddon's 13 Black Crusades have actually had the goal of finding and destroying certain ones of these and gathering the Blackstone Fortresses to use, which were then consequently obliterated except for maybe one or two. We do know that the Blackstone Fortresses can actually act on their own, which is also really cool, and that's revealed in the Battlefleet Gothic game. So, neato mosquito right there. Oh yeah, I should probably talk about this, this battle really quickly. Conflicts such as these are arising across the galaxy as f more Forge Worlds are found to be harboring ancient and terrible secrets. Well, yeah, I mean, these black stones might be shards of a Satan at some point or something potent to it. And we do know that the Satan have taken interest in the Cult Mechanicus because of the Void Dragon shard that's on Mars. We know this. There's a there's the cult of the dragon on Mars. We know that this is happening. So these two having conflicts between each other could actually be the gods themselves rebelling against the Necrons to finally try to push them away and destroy them with their own personal army of new robot men. Or it could be that I'm just making all of this up based on very loosely written lore. And that's the best part about 40k. Just saying. Um, all right, let's get a cool look of this. at this. We got two old men staring each other down. They're old men robots staring each other down. This guy doesn't look like he's having that great of a day. He's not even firing his weapon. He's, you know, this is like Larry over here. Larry is kind of depressed. Like, his scanner is just like, yo, dude, shoot that guy. And he's just like, what am I doing with my life? Like, why am I here? Why do they decide to get a... a why did I decide to get all these augmentics? They don't make me happy. Man, I just want to go home. And this guy right here, he kind of just lost his arm and lost everything. He's just like, I want to go deck that guy in the face. <laughs> oh yeah, I should talk about the baby knights. <sighs> Whether you're just getting started or looking for a way into the 40k millennium, not just going into the 40k millennium, you'll die. <laughs> Like, you'll die, be worked to death, and die, or die unknown, or be ripped apart by some mysterious monster that 
resides in your world or you'll be ripped apart by Larry down the road who then joins the Mechanicus and then has, you know, his entire life turned around. <sighs> Poor Larry. Man, I feel bad for Larry. Okay, so let's take a look at the actual army and be serious. Okay, you got two of the baby knights, which are pretty cool, and I do want to get to them in just a second. You have some Skatari rangers, and you have an old man with walking stick. On the other side, you have three wraiths, a bunch of old men with shields, some with um, the, I know this, those look like Tesla carbines, but that's not the name of the weapon, that is the... Oh my god, why am I drawing such a blank? I played Necrons for over a year. Gauss Flares? No, it's not the Gauss Flare. That's the basic weapon. It's the... Tesla something. I know it's something to do with Tesla because in all fantasy and sci-fi universes, anytime you talk about Tesla, it's a bolt of lightning that can shock between things. So look at Command and Conquer for that. Okay, then you got the old man surfing on a surfboard. Like, this is this is Master Roshi. Like, I don't care what anybody else says. This is just Master Roshi. Like, there he is. He is going to teach the Imperium the Kamehameha. That is Master Roshi. There's the turtle. Like, look, right here. The turtle, a cape, looks like a pervert. Master Roshi. He's even waving hi or telling people, yeah... He's also really, 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 like, slightly nettled. Like, that face definitely says, slightly nettled. Oh, also to everybody saying that that's a gauze weapon, that the other one is the gauze weapon, the, the double-barreled one. That's, the, that's the, the other weapon the immortals get, and I can't remember the name of it. Anyway. So, let's, uh, let's go right. You might recognize the knight, the baby knight, <laughs> the war glaives, and the Necron uh, Synaptic Crypt, bleh, the Necron Cryptech with the distinctive Canoptic Cloak, Master Roshi. There's a, that was revealed at Las Vegas Open. No wonder, Master Roshi loves Las Vegas. Lots of nudity, lots of strippers, lots of gambling, Master Roshi. Just say, this guy is probably drunk as hell teaching people to Kamehameha. Entering the World Martial Arts Tournament. Just saying. Meanwhile, the Baby Knight are a new... That's not true. And I'm, I'm going to point this out too. That is not true. Lightweight class of Imperial Knight piloted by a knight in training. Lesser members of the noble, heis, noble household or just commoners who jacked a knight. I don't care what other... What what they try to say there, these dudes, just commoners, ran up and jacked your knight and ran away with it. This is Ghetto Knight. This is baby Ghetto Knight, and I love it. Um, it is the job of the smaller knights uh, to range, range ahead for their brethren and annihilate any threat. In particular, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So these are the scout. These are the scouts for the knights. But this is the scout for the Titans, because this is a Warhound Scout Titan. This is also the armor cast model, and I'm going to get to why this is important in just a second. Also, this is my baby, and his name is Anubis, and I love him. He's only died twice in games. Um, $188 USD. Uh, Set will cost you less than getting everything inside separately. That's before you count the new Cryptech and Imperial Knight units. That is true. Um, this box set is going to be like the uh, Dark Imperium where it sent, saves you a bunch of money. And it's probably not going to be a snap fit army. Because if you look at these ball joints, they actually do curve and everything. So I'm really interested to see that. Because if you look at him here and them in there, they have two different distinct ways of holding their arms. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. So we get a look at the knight itself, finally. He looks adorable. Let's just say that they really like Cyclopses for some reason, although this guy might have five eyes, we're not sure. There's a big dick gun on top of it because this is Ghetto Knight, you need to have a big dick gun on the top of it. That's how you know it's Ghetto. 
Uh, less armored, no stubbers on the side like his brother. So this is the Imperial Knight. So he doesn't have the stubbers or the shield, so probably not a 5-up save. We don't know yet. There might be leaked rules about him. I'm probably going to go ahead and put a mask on him because I kind of hate the open cockpit face. Yeah, Grand Theft God Machines, yes. Oh, I should nickname this that, uh, this episode that. Um, very similar looking in design to the Imperial Knight. It's just a little lightly armored and a lot smaller. This thing's probably about four inches tall, maybe five inches tall. I don't know what that is in non-Americanese, so forgive me. These guys will fit into your Lord of War slot nearly, uh, neatly, neatly, nearly. So they are Lord of War. Um, that's kind of disappointing because I really wanted, um, I really wanted a knight army that had scouts, that had troops, that had elites, that had something that wasn't just another Lord of War. Because now I can't take a knight. I can't, well, I can, but I'm getting to that in just a second. I can't take like three knights and two of these guys or three knights, three of these guys like I wanted to. Um, even though I could take two supreme, com uh, super heavy detachments and do that, but at the same time, I don't have like objective secured. I don't have anything cool. So I, I kind of wish these guys did have a obsac, but that's just me. Okay. Moving on. We got another really, 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 really neat picture, which shows like the Necrons fighting up against the Imperium, the Mechanicus doing their things. Now we do get a good size comparison to this thing next to, I know this thing's name and for the life of me, it's eluding me. The minivan on crab legs, that's creepy. And probably looks like it offers candy to children. Anyway, we get a look at these two side by side just about. It looks like they're a little bit, they're about the same size as each other with the knight being a little bit taller mostly because it's closer to the camera itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is slightly bigger than, yeah. Now, moving into the next part, uh, Forge Bane is a great place to start a Necron or Adeptus Mechanicus army, or both! Hint, hint, nod, nod, spend your money here! And we'll set, and we'll set, and this set will cost less than getting everything inside separately. And that's before you count the new Cryptech and Imperial Knight units. Yay! Okay. Uh, Forge, Bane will be, Forge Bane will be coming out soon. So now we get a look at the set and everything that's inside it. Those are the gauze weapons. Those are the immortals with the, the gauze flare or blaster or something like that. The other ones had the, um, the Tesla weapon. I just can't remember what it's called. <sighs> So we get a look at it from its side. It's kind of silly looking, but that's 40K. 40K is very, very, very silly looking. We got Master Roshi fighting up against another old man. They're fighting over this lawn. It doesn't look that impressive, but they're fighting over the lawn. It's basically plants versus zombies, except they're both pretty much zombies at this point. I mean, these guys are just slaves to a Satan. These guys are just slaves to another Satan. That's why they're fighting. So, I wanted to get into something else really quickly while we talk about this. They said that this knight was new. Um, okay, what are they calling this knight again? They're calling it the Warglaive, the this, okay? And they're using that design. That, that's cool. Tesla Destructor, thank you. Knew I knew it. Now, what you guys can't see is I have a website, which I will probably post in the link in the description down below, which goes over all of the ancient stuff in Warhammer 40k. So I went ahead and looked at the Epic model line. The Epic model line has a lot of cool stuff. Some stuff that we've seen before and things that we're re-seeing in the lore, like the Titans themselves. So like I said, this is the armor cast 
Warhound Titan. It's a lot smaller than its brother, the Warhound Titan, which was made only a few years after this. This Titan was really cheap, made by a it was made by a licensed company of Games Workshop, but not a company that Games Workshop owns. But that's the way the original knights, the original, stand still, you bastard. The original Warhounds looked. They were dogs. They were scout titans. They were running. They did all these cool things. They had all these cool weapons. So if we look at this, we can actually see like the bubbled back look of the titans themselves. So we go over to the Warhounds. This is from Epic. Um, we get to see how they look and everything. You got to see my one really quickly. Now, if we look over at the knights themselves, whoop, let me click in, you get some really, really silly designs. But I want to point out their names. The Warden, the Paladin, Lancer. These are all names that have recently started reappearing in the Warhammer 40k lore. We now have Lancer Knights. We now have Paladins, which I think this guy is a Paladin. So look at the very distinct difference. But at the same time, look at this middle one and look at him. You'll start noticing very, very, very close similarities. Also, your foot broke at some point and I really need to re-glue it, but I never bring you guys out to battle. And I really wanted to bring this up for some cool little tidbits and some going back and looking at the old 40k lore. So we go back to even further in the epic models and we get some other cooler stuff. For one, this sprue is from epic, obviously. And let's see what's on it. One robot, just robot. Keep in mind, they did not separate the robots from the Imperium yet. This was before that lore. Two Marine Captains. Two Marines with heavy weapons. One Marine Commander. 20 Marines in Mark VII armor. Two Marines in Terminator armor. Four Marines with jump packs. Two Marine Bikers. And a land speeder. Look at the size of that land speeder, by the way. Okay, and there's the robot right there. So we get some really cool stuff. Now, unfortunately, you're not going to see a lot of it because my face is in the way. Then we go to the Epic Imperial Guard. And I want to bring this up because, and because, because, we're going to see some cool things in 40K's very, very near future. And I have a feeling a lot of this stuff is going to be back. So let's read the Imperial Guard box and take a look at it really quickly. So right off the bat, for Imperial Guard, we see a motorcycle. That's awesome. Each sprue contains the following. 15 Imperial Guard, 4 assault troops with jump pack. Now we do know that the guard do have jump packs already. They are in the form of grab shoots, which are pretty cool. The Elysians use them quite a bit, but they're not the same as jump packs. One Imperial Guard gunners. I'm guessing those are heavy weapon teams. One Imperial Commissar, two Rattling Sniper Infantry, three Beastmen, which we saw come back. As a single troop for right now, as a single model, same with the squad, and we can get to those too. One Heavy Weapon Guardsman, okay, I guess I was wrong on that. One Imperial Guard Officer, one Sentinel Walker, which is gigantic by the way. One Robot, one Ogren Troop, two Rough Riders, two Imperial Guard Bikers. And now we go down even more, because everybody likes going down. Just kidding. We look at robots. For the robots, we have the Colossus, the Cataphragi. Where have I heard that name before? The Crusader. Hmm, that name is back. The Conqueror. We don't have anything by that name yet. And the Castellan. Oh, look at that. The Castellan robots. Those are in the Admech army. Then we look over again, and these were made prior to their, their um, Forge World counterparts. Keep that in mind. So, we look at this. We have the Contemptor with Banner. For, I'm not going to try to pronounce the next one. 
I know how to pronounce it, but I'm going to mess up and I'm going to trip up on it and everybody's going to get mad at me. The Contemptor class. And then we have the Derrideo right at the end, right here. Okay, sorry you can't see its name, but just so you can kind of see it, Derrideo. Okay, now keep in mind, it looks incredibly silly. This is the current Derrideo. I think he looks awesome. He's a vending machine with guns. But Alexis, what does this have to do with anything that you were talking about? I wanted to bring up that these knights, these designs, these things that they are doing, the new stuff in the lore, the new stuff that they are bringing into 40k, the new thingamajigs that they're designing for the tabletop, are not new. They are honoring what they had previously. In fact, the warden over here, the third warden, this thing is the skull taker. The, um, the, the, uh, bah, 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 bah. the super heavy, the cornate thingamajig that it kind of looks silly. Just saying, it's there. It's right there. Or in this case, right there. We're going to start seeing creatures like this. And we're going to start seeing chaos robots again, potentially. And I want to bring back bring it back to this because we are seeing the thermites we are seeing the moles we are seeing new drop pods in the lore there's gorgons hellbores which we've already seen in 30k the eldar titans might get some new stuff the gargans might actually be put on the field i am actually really really excited to see the future of 40k and see what they bring into the 40k model line from Epic, from 30k, from the lore itself. I can't wait to see all of the cool things that they bring in. And a lot of this is to honor their past. And I want to bring up one more thing. They have been looking at Rogue Trader, for instance. Rogue Trader is a huge influence onto the current, uh, the current climate in the 40k millennium. We are seeing cool stuff start to come back and I'm really excited for the future of 40k. So let's bring it back to these guys. You can see the similarity in designs for this knight and the knights that I showed you from Epic. And I gotta say, I'm really, really, really excited to actually play the old Epic models because I never got a chance to play them. And with the gigantic release at LVO about all of the stuff coming to 30k, all of the stuff coming to Necromunda, we are seeing all of the stuff from 15, 20 years ago. All of the players that have been so loyal for so long are finally seeing the cool stuff that they've seen when they started playing the game back on the tabletop. I think that's truly amazing. So if you guys are interested in the, well, the crazy robot wars, the battle bots, the Bane, <laughs> The Forge Bane, please check this set out. Please read up on some of the current lore. It is actually a lot better than a lot of other YouTube channels are saying. Um, Dark Imperium is actually an extremely well-written book and one of my favorites right now. And I gotta say, it. I just finished the Carrion Throne. That was an amazing ending. <sighs> I really have nothing else to say from this point. <sighs> yeah. So I think I'm going to wrap this up right there. If I've said too much nonsense, if I ranted on a bit too much, please let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if you want to yell at me about the weapons that I got wrong, I'm sorry. I don't know Necrons too much and I don't know Mechanicum too much, but I do intend to buy this set and I do intend to add these little knights to my shelves because I never play my knights. But before I go, there is a model that I've, I haven't shown off in so long and that is my Belisarius call. And if you notice, they got a little dinosaur head. <laughs> it's Ramlays. Oh, aren't you cute little Ramlays? Look at you and your battle automata. You look silly. So if I get the chance to start some Mechanicum, I think it'd be kind of cool, like a nice addition to the 40, to my 40K collection, something to just put up on the shelves and just, you know, look cool maybe play every now and then but i'm gonna end this here
let's go ahead and drag this over. I'm going to end this here. It's been great talking with you guys. I am excited about this box. Please take a look at this box if you are interested in a non-40k, non-Space Marine box set. This is a great way to get into the game, especially if you're sick of overly oiled up, greasy, giant gorilla men and want to play some robots because sci-fi is not the same without robots. Anyway, guys, I'm Lex Eagle Queen. I love you guys. Bye.